All right, now we want to do frequency separation now. With our layer selected here, come over here to the filter pad, go all the way down to you see frequency separator, which is right here. Click on it. And the purpose of this is you want to get a nice balance in between both the high frequency and the low. So you want to come over to the radial. And I like to bring a lot of detail into it because I really feel like I like working with a lot of the details. So I'm going to see here. I'm going to go up to about 20, it looks like. Maybe a little bit more. Let's just let's just do 22. It looks I think that looks pretty much in good balance. I'm getting a little bit more detailed in than the colors. So let's just go ahead and pre-separate that. All right. What it does after that is it goes ahead and put it in two layers for you, high and low, as you can see right there. You got your high have you low that's the reason why i like affinity photo um i know photoshop doesn't have that option you have to make it your own but i just kind of like it i just like it how you just got a one click and it's and it's there you know so this is the reason why i like using affinity photo another reason why i also chose to use affinity photo over photoshop is because i wanted to do, i wanted to do mobile i want something a little bit more mobile and as well like i, I work on a 2012 macbook and you know the screen it's not that that's not that great on it. So that's what I was doing on my edits beforehand. And I was always getting a little bit of color shifted and things like this, things of that nature. So instead of me just going out buying a brand new MacBook, because there's nothing wrong with my MacBook Pro right now, 2017, I got it completely specced out to uh, to its capabilities. So in, in order to be do that, just get a new MacBook and you know just to get a better screen, so I could do all my you no know, all my edits, my landscaping, portraits work. I went out and just got a iPad Pro. It's 2015 version. And, you know, a couple reasons why I did it. Reason one is because of the screen and reason two is because I wanted a little bit something, a little bit more smaller so I can carry around, carrying around this laptop was kind of, kind of brutal. So anyway, so when I got this, I've had, and I figured that, you know, I can be able to get a Photoshop and things like that. And I got, probably got it probably a year and a half ago. Um, there was no apps on there, you know, as good as anything. You know, Lightroom has came a long way since when I first got a year and a half ago. Like you can do a lot of things on Lightroom mobile on, on the iPad version, you can do tons of things on it. You got, it's pretty much almost like a full version on the iPad Pro at this point in time with, with Lightroom mobile. So but anyway, they don't have a good Photoshop. So when I started doing portraiture work back in September of 2017, and I you know, did YouTube videos to see how to do some retouching. So, you know, and on the iPad, the, the Photoshop app was just really bad. So I was watching a tutorial on the 2017 iPad version uh, on Tony Northup's channel. And he was actually doing a review for the iPad and he was actually showing off this app right here, Affinity Photo. He was like, you know, if you pretty much love using Photoshop, but you want it on a mobile, on a mobile version, this is pretty much the best thing, you know, that's out on the market for iPad. And truth be told, he was, he was completely right. This is, this app is absolutely amazing. And I, I love it a lot. And this is the only this I only do my retouching only in Affinity Photo. I love it a lot. I got it on the go. I can be at work on my lunch break, pull out my you know my iPad and do some retouching. I don't got to worry about bringing my laptop and and things. Well, so with the iPad and Apple Pencil, I do all my retouching on these things. So anyway, let's get into it. So the first thing I like to do is I like to go down here to the low frequency. I'll go back over to the filter. What I'm going to do first is I like adding the glossing blur to it. So let's just go ahead and I'm going to put up my before and after because I like to see the effect there. Let's just go ahead and start raising this up and see, you know, get a nice looking balance. You don't want it like super crazy, you know, something like that, you know, where it looks completely fake and airbrush. My, all, my goal is always to make things look as natural as possible, uh, you know, but this is where we're going to get this, the, the skin softened from as well also. So let's just go in and let's just say... Let's just go about, let's go about, let's go about 30 right here. Now I know that looks completely unnatural right now, but I'm going to do a couple more things that's going to really bring it back down and look like the picture we just had. So let's just go about right here. Go ahead and hit that live. You always want the live filter button and you got this little message right here when it says convert to live. Are you sure you want to convert it? You know, adding to me the live filter will will render the performance so just go ahead yes but you also want to do a live filter because you because it's non-destructive and if you hit the check checkpoint i mean the check it's going to be destructive 
I mean, non-destructive layer, and you won't be able to go back and change it unless you hit the undo button. So I always hit alive because it becomes a, a non uh, a destructible layer where you go back and change things. So hit that. And you see how it's completely all over the picture right now. And what I'm going to do is I just want to apply it to the face. So I'm going to hit this three thing button channel thing right here. It's going to bring me to the channel. That's what it is. It's a channel layer. I want to go right here to it says right here. Layer, Gaussian layer, alpha. You want to go to the alpha that controls it. I'm going to hit the three dots right there. And then I'm going to hit invert mask. What it's going to do is completely take it off. It's going to invert the mask. And now... I'm going to go back up here to my layers panel and I'm going to change the blend mode to darkening color. Come over to the paintbrush. Make sure everything's on 100% besides the hardness. I'm going to turn my brush up really, really big here. And then make sure my paintbrush is on white, which it is. And then I'm going to start painting on the Gaussian Glare effect. No, it's not coming. Let's go to color burn. There we go. Sorry. It's color burn because I like using color burn so I can see exactly where I'm putting this at because I don't want to I don't want to put this in the eyes and I don't like putting over the eyeshadow and things like that on or on the eyebrows so I just want to strictly apply this to the face and I don't like putting it on the lips as well so let's just strictly apply this here can I do a, can I do a rough job on this part right here so here. If you over, overlap on things, it's not really going to affect it, but try not to on the things that you don't want to get it on. Just like a little bit really doesn't hurt, you know, like right there. I'm not really concerned about that. Get it, I got a little bit there. I'm not gonna do a finger because it's already soft enough. I don't I'm not gonna do the, the hand right here. So let's go back, go back to normal. As now as you can see, that's a little bit much, and it is, but we're gonna fix that anyway. Now I'm either once I go to do on the high frequency, I'm either gonna change this to I'm gonna either keep it as normal, or I'm gonna come over here to either average color. Or luminosity it's just kind of really depends once i start really getting into the detail layer on the high frequency layer so as of right now i'm just going to keep it right there all right and you really see it kind of smoothing up the skin so now what else i'm going to do is just trying to get some of these colors back uh consistently i'm gonna go back to the end paint brush keep my hardness on zero now i'm going to come right here because you see how that color is just a little bit off right here so i'm just going to come here and paint that and what that does is in painting on the low frequency, all it's going to do is just take that color and just make it consistent as you see. You see that right there? And this is a trial and error because you have to probably go over this a, a few times. Okay, now since I got that done, everything looks pretty nice there. Sorry about that. This, this area right here is just really, really bothering me. I don't know what it is right here, but something's really bothering me. Maybe it's on the detail. I'm going to go to the detail and see what's going on there. So let's just go to the high, the detail level. When I say details, I mean the high frequency level. Let's go into the high frequency level. So now what I want to do right here is go to filters again. And what I'm gonna, first thing I'm going to do is do an unsharpening mask. Unsharpen your mask. I already have a, a formula in my head that I always use for my unsharpening mask. I'm going to apply this to the eyes right now. And I'm going to go to 15 on the radio. Then the factor, I like going to 18. As you can see, this gets super, super detailed right there. First thing I want to do is I'm going to hit the live filter as, as before. And then I'm going to come through. This is the same thing I did with the Gaussian Blur. Come over here to the channel, hit invert it, paintbrush. Make sure my flow was all the way up to 100. When you mess with the detail, make sure your flow's to 100. And now, make sure your brush is white. And all I want to do is come up here so I can make sure I can see what I'm doing when I paint this on. Come back down to my land and go to the color burn. And now I'm just going to paint this on to the eyes. Oh man, I forgot to turn my brush there. But it's fine to really do anything there. All right. Let's go on through. 
apply this to the eyes here. What this also does, this really makes the eyes pop without adding any brightening to it. I haven't added any brightener to, to my eyes, in, neither in Lightroom nor in here, as you can see through this tutorial. But this right here really brightens up the eye and really makes it look really good. Make that eye pop. All right, once you get done with that, go back to normal and bam, there it is. Now I'm gonna cut that on and off there so you can really see what that really did there. There it for. It just gives it that, that it gives it that sharpening, which, which it does, but it also gives it, it also adds, you know, a little pop to its brightness as well. You know, there it is on, and once again, to cut it off, you can really see, it's very, very subtle, but you can really see the difference, and there it is on. You really see the difference. So now, I'm gonna come on in here, we're gonna start with the healing brush. I'm just gonna get rid of a lot of these pores and everything else, and I like doing it using the healing brush. I make sure that my hardness is at 100. I like to use my flow around 10 and about 10 to 12, around, around some, between 10 to 15. And we're just gonna start doing, healing, healing out some of these imperfections here. Well, not really imperfections, but we're just gonna, just really gonna start making that skin even more softer. So now since we got all that done, looking pretty good, I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna go back over here to the low frequency because I felt like I missed out on the spot. Really trying to get the color consistency, which is right underneath our eye here. I'm just gonna go through again. And just really try to clean this up. I like doing this anyway, I like going back over after I get finished doing things to the high frequency anyway, just to kind of balance out more of the color shift where I'm just kind of healing up some of them some of the details in there it also affects a little bit of the of, of the low frequency side you know both of these affect each other even though they're separate layers but they do affect each other how the total how when you merge them together it comes out so just because i just want people to know that just kind of pay attention to it just because you do something on one on, on one layer of make sure you go back and check it and do it some other layer to kind of correct it because it does affect each other even though it's very subtle but it does affect it does affect each other so just always remember, if you do something on one layer of the, either the high or the low, make sure you go back to e either or and just go back through and just do little simple things. Like I said, I'm just going back just in paint just to kind of get that color consistency back because I've seen a couple of things where where I was using, you know, the high frequency and it just made kind of little, you know, patch color and in, in, in the colors that I just done. So I'm just going back over it so, can, so it can just consistently get that color all over my face again. So that's what I'm doing now. All right, so now we're back done with that. And what we're gonna do now is cut on, cut on back on glossy and blur, and there it is right here. Now remember, this is on luminance as of right now. now let's just go back and see. All right, let's see what color does for us. See, color looks pretty good too. It really softens it out. It's really making it look pretty, pretty, pretty good. Let's go to average here. Average is doing a pretty good job too. I think I actually think I may leave it on average. Yeah, let's leave it on average. Average looks pretty, pretty good. Now we're pretty much off. We're just pretty much done with the picture now. Just going through and just getting little changes here and there on on this. Just going back through the healing brush and just kind of making some things a little bit better, so it won't look so so with the gaussian blur on there, so it can still look really really natural. Another thing, another tip I can give you also is if you don't want to really go back through and do all this. What you can also really do is come come back to the high frequency. Even with your Gaussian blur, and let's just cut the intensity on on the Gaussian blur back up back up here. So that on average, go to luminance, right? You know, luminance is pretty it's pretty nice. But if you want to keep if you want to bring out even more detail, even though I think that looks pretty good, looks natural, does look looks like you know it's a lot of retouch been done, even though we have been doing a lot. Um, like I said, the key is to make it look as natural as possible. That's the key to just retouching it. You don't want to look like like a 
just completely over overdone here. Now, since we, I'm going to turn up the high priestess to give you a little tip. Now, if you want to come back here, go back to filters and put another sharpening mask on it that also brings out more detail. Again, even though we just smoothed out detail, but just let's look at how it does. I just put this on 15 here, 15, and just put it at 12 this time. Bring the factor up just a tad bit. Okay. Now I'm going to make that mask there. Now, look how incredible detail it looks now. And also, don't forget, you want to come back here. I just change the blend mode to color burn right now. And because you we already put a sharpening, don't forget, we put a sharpening already on the eyes already. So you don't want it to, over, to be over sharpening. So it's come through here, especially when you add a second mask. So just come through and just take out the sharpening on the eyes because we already we already applied one. So we don't want to double apply it. All right, you go back up here. Now, this also can be changed. Now, say if you like this, the way it looks, you know, I think that looks pretty good. But if you want to like tone down some of the sharpening, because I think that looks perfect, you know, that's for me. But let's just go, just mess with the with it again. You come back again, again to do average color. Just play with it until you find a look that you like. Is is the key here. I come up here to Luminosity. I can put both Luminosity thing on there with the Luminosity Gaussian Blur and Luminosity uh, Sharpening here. And that works out. That's also a nice little combination. Now, if I scoot it back here, just look at it. It, it, it looks really good. It looks natural. And that's the way we want it to, to, to be like. Okay? This is the way we want our, our portrait work to look like. I'm actually going to use Average. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use Average on this one because I think that looks a little bit better. And I can see right here something's going on with some detail here. So let's just let's just go back around this area. Something's going on with a cheek there. So let me go here. I'm going to use the end paint on the high frequency first because something weird is just going on here. Right, and there we go. Now we're done with this pretty much. I'm just going to go through to see little things that I see little by little, just little little stuff. So then after that, after you you're happy with with everything, if you feel like you're good and happy with things. I'm pretty happy with this. It looks good. Thing looks pretty pretty nice there. Um, I don't know if it's me, but something's going on with this deck on leaves also. Let me go back in. And now, in order to put this all in one big picture here now, all we gotta do is just come over here, select everything we just done here, here, and also just go ahead take the brightness there. First of all, we can group it. Well, let's not really group it, but we could. But Everything looks pretty pretty good to me. Everything looks pretty nice. All right, so now we're done here. All we gotta do is come over here, swipe both the layers here. We're gonna swipe this third one as well. Come over here. We're gonna merge, select layer, and that's just gonna give us our, our finished product here. All right, so now we're finally done. I just put this in the group, and this is our final image right here. As you see, turn it off. It's the original. Turn it on. Once again, turn it off. And this is what we've done. And this looks pretty. it looks pretty natural. Now, of course, the, the original, like I said, that's because I just add a lot of clarity to it to in order to do this and still make it look pretty natural, well formatted like it does now. As you see, if you come here and mess with the luminance, and if you really still want to tone some of that down, you still can. And it still looks natural. Like right here, we had it all the way cranked up with luminance way up here. Um, if you want, you can come down here and kind of and kind of mess with it. Or once again, you can come over here, or you can put it on, on, on the same exact layer as we just did with the unsharpened mask right here. This is on average. So if you want to come here and also put this Gaussian blur on an average, then it just kind of averages out. But you can you can really kind of crank that back up, as you can see. And it still looks a lot. It still looks pretty good right there. But it's very subtle, though. It's so subtle. You can't even see it. I'll do it again. Here it is without it. And then here it is with it on. It's so freaking subtle, but it still looks natural and it still looks good. So that's about it right there. Like I said, the picture is finally done. Just kind of mold it at the last step to, to your likings. Just go over things and... This is the final picture that we have. So I'll also show you the last step to export this picture. I always export in a, in a TIFF file. So to export this picture, come over here to tap, export. I keep it in a TIFF. I do it in an 8-bit, even though this is at a 16-bit when I import it in, but I keep it at 8-bit just to save my file size, and I know I'm not going to do anything else to it. So 8-bit is fine with me because I know this is the final step, and I'm not doing anything else to this even when I bring it back over to, to Lightroom. If, the only thing, if I bring it over to Lightroom and I'm not liking the color of the skin, maybe if I didn't color, skin correct the color a little bit too much, then I may change it there. But other than that, I keep it right here on 8-bit file size here.
to generate and export here down to share. Either I'll share it straight to my to my MacBook Pro or just save it to my file and I'll I do it later. So I'm just going to save it right now to my file. Come back out. Come on over. Here's the picture we've got doing. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I'll be making more tutorials in the future. Um, please give me a like, comment, and subscribe if you want to see me do more tutorials. But I will be doing more some tutorials. Uh, just not on Retouch, but on my landscape work as well. And I really hope you enjoy this. Until the next time.